Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade and today we want to look at the game Undercover Cops. Now this was another recommendation from you YouTubers out there. I'll be honest this is the first time I'm playing it. I've got my facts, I've got my trivia but I am looking at it for the first time as much as you are. Um, straight away I'm not sure what's going on. Um, are, the, are these people good guys, bad guys? Let's have a look shall we? Okay, born in 2015, not bad for a game from 1992. Distinct lack of music there. Okay, so we've been introduced to our first character, this Karate Nutter, whoever he is. I hope this game has music, otherwise this is going to be massively disappointing. Okay, the evil consortium, who's next? Bubba. Have a look. Fireball Crusher. Ugh. 2018 he was born, so next year. And from the world of football. Okay, so a football hooligan. Fabulous. Okay. Mystical, strange, energy fo American football. Okay. At the moment, I'm gearing more towards the karate guy. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, Blue Gale Revenger. Okay, she was born in 2021. Fabulous. Used to be the only female vigilante. Hmm. She has an excessive hatred of evil. Okay. Okay, and she has a butt attack. No, it's going to be the karate guy. Let's be honest, it's going to be the karate guy. Wow. The mayor and the council do things a lot differently in this game. Oh, we might have an intro here. This is one of the longest arcade intros I've ever seen. But it completely lacks music. What? Here she comes? Is she cops? Okay, this is me entering the credits, everyone. What does that say? Something city cops? Pishy cops? Meh, I'm going to call them shilly cops. Right, so Claudia. Again, I've never heard of this game. Again, I, I, let's have a look. Okay, so we're in the game. So straight away, not bad visuals, you know, for 1992, this is about what I'd expect. Prior to this video, of course, I was playing Golden Axe, um, Revenge of Death, Adder, whatever he's called, and the graphics to that were not dissimilar to this. Once again, this is a three-player arcade game. Not a lot of three-player arcade games, got to say. Um, so we've got a three-player walk-along arcade game, but this is, of course, available in two players as well. We have the standard dash attack. But again, I've mentioned it before, but my pet hate. This game is not showing the energy bars of the adversaries. I will never understand the logic. It's that really going to cause as much of a difficulty with regards to memory as I, as I think it should. Many games by this point already had that. Okay, I've received some sort of um, oh, Walkman. Now I've picked up a TV. Now, this game has two buttons, button one and two. Button one is the combat button, and button two is the jump. If you press them together, then we are getting that super move. But as unsurprising as it seems, it will reduce my energy. Also, I don't know what year this is supposed to be, but there's skeletons on a girder there. No, thought that might scare those bad boys off. Oh no, use up way too much energy. Apparently someone, uh, one of you YouTubers had a great time playing this game. Um, at the moment I'm, f I'm finding it difficult to find out what makes it stand out. Even the animations don't seem particularly impressive. The music's a bit two dimensional. Um, you know, obviously it's 2D, but even then the music just doesn't seem to have any relevance to it. Um, I'm not... I'm not invested, if you know what I mean. 
that's quite cool the ability to use these giant items but ultimately they are just variations of existing um, walk along beat em up dynamics so I can't really give that anything extra I am getting a bit sick of that and the hit detection there was appalling and we're back Okay, that guy can fucking do one. I'm sorry to swear so early on, but... Okay, so I've got a tiny bit of giant pylon left. Okay, those are some pretty terrible um, fish grabs there. Okay, for some reason that fish made me momentarily invincible. Who knows why? You know, fair play to them. It's a nice enough game. You know, it was just another game in the arcade to put a coin in. But right now, I don't understand why uh, this game should be held in any higher regard than a number of walk-on beat-em-ups. I mean, let's slightly overlook the fact he was able to pick up a car quite easily. And now we're going to pick up these girders. Also, this guy arrived with... Okay. He's a semi-android. Have a look. Oh. Okay, he has a whole extra energy bar. That I didn't see coming. Okay, he's a bit Terminator. This looks like someone that had lots of fun drawing the creation. Indeed, they had more fun drawing him. Um, oh, wow, that was dark. Oh, I think we are going to pop another credit in this. Let's see who we're going to play. All right, let's go for the girl. Let's give her a go. Right. But before we go any further, let's talk trivia. Because despite the fact this game does seem to be a, a touch underwhelming, I mean, the graphics are nice. It is good, but there's nothing really that stands out in this game. Normally, by this stage in the video, I've at least highlighted some of the more interesting points in some of these walk along beat em up games. But this one, it lacks um, any sort of um, independence that makes it any different from any of the other games I've played. Look at Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. That is a phenomenal walk-along game that takes on and improves a number of different mechanics of walk-along games. But this one seems to... All it's tried to be is a nice, quick, easy copy. It had that opening introduction, which wasn't bad, so there's clearly a narrative there. But ultimately, it doesn't seem to really jump out. Now, the game was originally made in 1992 for the arcade and was released later on for the SNES in 1995. So that's a big jump of three years between the arcade and the SNES. So there's definitely something there. But what made them release that SNES version? Well, it was originally really, uh, published and developed by IREM, I -R -E -M, a company that was soon to disappear. Um, again, not looking good for undercover cops. It was utilising the IR, um, IREM M92 system machine, and again, not all of arcade machines that are particularly well known, or arcade games that are well known, utilise that board. Um, it had a very, very small success uh, in Japan, but just enough, I would say, to have its own manga by Wayata Uziga. Um, it was published under the Greatest Comics series by Shenisha in 1993, <coughs> which presumably would lead um, uh, weight to that SNES release later on. Um, a few years after its uh, release, a lot of the team involved in this game, artists, programmers, um, composers, designers, etc., um, who made this game, would all go on to form um, the uh, Nazca Corporation, who created the Metal Slug series. So you can definitely see that color scheme and that palette and that design there, and you know what they particularly enjoy. You can see that even on that paused screen there. Um, but again, it, it's it's a shame that this had to be made along the way because whereas Metal Slug is hugely popular and hugely well known, hardly anyone's heard of Undercover Cops. 
Um, now there's two different versions of this game. There is a Japanese version and a world version. And the Japanese version has so, so much more. And this is kind of the big problem for this game outside of Japan. Because not only did it not have a manga and stuff backing it up, but the game itself was severely uh, like gibbed and crippled. And, um, uh, the the American version has half the moves removed. I mean, most most of the moves you see on screen are exceedingly limited. They can't even be performed uh, in in uh, the world version. Some of the opening uh, graphic ones, I can't even perform them because this is still the world version. Um, it was because of the lack of those extra moves and those extra techniques. The game lacks of most most of the depth of the likes of Streets of Rage, Final Fight, and games like that. There's also lots of graphics missing in the background compared with the um, Asian slash Japanese version. Depends how you look at it. And lots of the differences are missing. And um, also some names are different as well. The main characters have their name changed. Um, in the Japanese version, they are known as Zan, Matt, and Rosa. And in this, they were called Claude, Bubba, and Flame. No one knows why, and it just reeks of beta, unfinished work. Uh, now, the SNES version has a noticeable difference. It was three years had passed, remember, since the release of this version. They got the Japanese version, but modified. So at least they got that full, complete version. But on top of that, one of the enemies, known as Fox, um, whose breasts are visible after being knocked down on the floor, that was actually censored in the SNES version. Now... I could make a whole video on some of the insane censorship of SNES, but you kind of got to give them their due on that one. Bare breast in a game for teenagers and below, not so good. So you can see why they made that change. But let's head back into the game, shall we? And see how things go. Okay, so now we're playing as Flame. Was she a revenge expert or whatever it she was? Okay, let's have a look. Still not... Okay, I've got the invincibility frog, whatever that was, and it lasted a whole second. At least this guy... Okay, let's... Okay, that just happened. That was awful. I'll be honest, I'm annoyed I keep falling for that. Oh no, would have missed him anyway, but got him. There you go. Better late than never. Has anyone noticed the insane similarity in the fonts and the transitions uh, between this and Metal Slug? They definitely kept the entire font. Okay, so now we've got an end of round report letting us know who we defeated. Uh, okay, at least it's topped up my health. So there is at least that mechanic. Here she comes. Is she caught? What does that say? Okay, that butt attack is out in full force. Okay, apparently she can pick up a girder as well. That's helpful. Oh, okay. Thought I could pick those up. I thought that would be a purple, perfectly natural reaction to that, but never mind. Again, Cadillacs and dinosaurs would have been totally different. Oh, this guy. Okay, she seems to be faring a lot better than he was. Okay, apparently I can pick up a motorbike. Why not? Okay, how do we get from a door to a lift? But okay. I, I get the impression this is the chick that we're supposed to be avoiding. Let's carry on. Go 
Okay. I don't know what the snail does, but let's find out. Oh dear. Okay, oh Christ, how many of it? This is getting real dull. And there you go, that's it. Well, that was Undercover Cops. Got to say, woefully un uninspiring. The, the characters themselves are pretty disappointing. The colour scheme's nice, but ultimately this is just another walk-along beat-em-up. It doesn't seem to have anything that jumps out at me. So, there's going to be more games, of course. Let me know in the comments the sort of games that you want to see on the channel. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do let me know what games you want to see on the channel in the future. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And see what the game over screen looks like. Seriously, that was your luck. There's one more for the luck. What does that mean? Who knows?